on Fox Sports Net, the Class 2A State Football Championship featuring the Cardinals of Stillman Valley High against the Hawks of Meridian. Well, you're looking at Zupke Field on the campus of the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium, the site of the Illinois State High School Association Football Championships. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Champaign-Urbana, along with Hall of Fame coach Jack McNerney. That's him. I'm Mike Lederman, and we will continue Fox exclusive IHSA football coverage all through the weekend. What a legendary place, Jack, to play football for these youngsters where Red Range ran, where Dick Buckus uh, did lots of other things and ate up ball carriers. It's got to be a wonderful feeling, but it's also got to be somewhat intimidating, at least at first. Well, I'm sure it is, Mike, and it probably is only during warm-ups. During Thanksgiving dinner, probably Mom and Dad talked about all the great games that were played here and all the great stars that played here and hopefully talk their kids into realizing what a great experience it will be for them. But when it comes down to the kickoff, the focus will change, the intimidation will leave, and they'll be playing football. The first hit, all the nerves will go. Stillman Valley has made the semifinals the last two years. This year, they've already taken one step further, and they've gotten to the finals. They want to make it one more giant step before they get out of here, and that's take home the state championship. This is a senior-dominated team, dominated by a might and a mountain, a 5'8 halfback and a 6'5", 300-pound lineman. Well, probably only because he's 5'8 and 150 pounds is he able to hide behind that big tackle. But A.J. Briarton has 820 yards, and he really is the go-to guy. But when it comes down to crunch time, you'll always be able to tune your TV to where Babcock is because he is such a mountain of a player, 6'4", 300 pounds, being recruited by most of the Big Ten schools. He is the kind of guy that they run behind. So I hope your TV is over 21 inches because they have him in the screen. You're going to need the big screen. The wide screen, yeah. absolutely. The uh, Hawks and Meridian are making the most of their first ever playoff appearance. This is a new school, only six years old. They've gotten to the finals. Like most small schools, most of the players go offense and defense. Nine of them do here. And Jason Trotter, number 33, he's the guy who stars on both sides of the ball. Well, he is, and also, as you mentioned, everybody goes both ways. But Trotter is a key player because he's not only the, the number two rusher for him, but he's also the leading tackler on defense. So he's a big key for them in this kind of a game. He's going to be how, how good is his condition come second half and certainly in the fourth quarter. And, of course, the other guy that they go to, the number one rusher, is Clint Wilson. Over 1,200 yards rushing out of their eye formation. He's the tailback. He has the speed on the outside. Trotter, the power on the inside. So settle back, relax, get some of that extra leftover turkey. You're going to enjoy this one. Right now, let's bring in the third member of our team, man on the sidelines, Livingston, New Jersey's gift to the Midwest. Here's Mitch Robinson. Thanks, Mike. You know, when you come to the final game of your season, you want to be peaking. That's what these two teams are doing. Stillman Valley coming off their best playoff game, a 45-6 win over Fulton. Meridian coming off one of their finer games, a 40-13 victory over Tolano. Right now, it's time to go up to PA announcer Jeff Fritzen with today's starting lineups. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the introduction of the starting lineups for today's Class 2A state championship game. First for Stillman Valley. Starting on defense, at left end, number 44, Brant Bennett. Left tackle, number 79, Pat Babcock. At right tackle, number 92, David Bank. At right end, number 88, Keith Rader. At linebacker, number 57, Kyle Connell. At linebacker, number 83, Colby Johnson. At defensive back, number 22, Jason Kenyon. Defensive back, number 24, Brad Winterland. Defensive back, number 26, Rusty Beamer. At safety, number 33, Matt. Cop. And in nose guard number 80, Kenny Solzer. The Cardinals are coached by Mike Lawler. And now the starting offense for Meridian. At left end, number 14, Derek Smith. 
Todd, left tackle. Number 72, Tanner Cole. At left guard, number 65, Steve Sprague. At center, number 79, Cody Bush. At right guard, number 54, Justin Johnson. At right tackle, number 67, Adam Turnage. At right end, number 44, Chris Renfro. At quarterback, number 10, Shane Major. At halfback, number 7, Clint Wilson. At flanker, number 80, Dustin McWhorter. And at fullback, number 33, Jason Trotter. The Hawks are coached by Dennis Gatchel. So there are your starting lineups, and as we get ready to this game, let's take a look at how both teams have gotten here to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. First, we look at the Stillman Valley Cardinals and their playoff run. They get off on the ledger with a 16-14 tough win over Lena Winslow, 18-14. Then they beat up on Hampshire, a one-point win over Alito, and then the blowout against Fulton. As for Meridian, they are showing some nice defense. A 28-20 win to open it. Then they give up only six points against Auburn, a shutout against Argenta, and then the 40-13 win over Colonel Unity. All right, it's just about game time. Get ready for it. Mike, Jack, take it away. Okay, Mitch, the weather, boy, it's gorgeous. It's been a wonderful day. 50 degrees humidity here. Oh, very comfortable, 41%. That wind, well, it's moved around. A lot of times it's coming straight from the south, right by the Ag School, and we'll talk about more of that later. And the forecast, well, until it gets dark, it's going to be sunny, but it is going to be cool. The lights are on, and we are just about set to kick off. The Cardinals, Jason Kenyon, puts the ball in the air and through the end zone. And that's an automatic touchback. You can't run it out in high school. All you pro football fans are wondering, why is it going to go get that ball? Because you can't. It's going to be first and 10 for the Hawks on the 20. And we'll show you the offense for the Meridian Hawks, undefeated at 13 up and uh, none down. The offensive line, Cole Sprague's the big guy at 250. Cody Bush, Justin Johnson, a converted fullback, and Adam Turnage, the senior, over at right tackle. Major is the quarterback. He is a senior. Range, he can throw the ball. Wilson and Trotter are two of your backs. And your receivers, Smith, McWhorter, and Renfro. First play out of the box. Not much happening as the tackle made by Brad Bennett. On number 33, Jason Trotter. We'll take a look at the Cardinals' defense. Bennett Babcock Sulcer is the nose guard. Watch him. Small guy, big heart. Banks and Raider, the 5-2 across the front. The two, Connell and Colby Johnson, the linebackers. They're going to rotate Todd Funk in that linebacker spot. Kenyon, Winterland, and Beamer, two sophomores, called up for the playoffs. They have been pleasant surprises. And Nat Cox on second down. This is Major on the option. Options to keep it. Breaks through the first line, gets up to close to first down yardage. Brought down by Beamer, the sophomore. The ball just shy of the 30, and we'll show you to you from the end zone on second and long. Just an option. You can see the fake right here to hold those linebackers. Pulls the ball out when they when those tackles squeeze down. He gets out on the perimeter and picks up a nice, nice gain, nine yards. Third and a very short one formation and split left and they give it right across to Jason Trotter and Trotter gets across the 30 not by much but he only needed about half a yard tackle made by Kyle Connell one of the inside backers just the start of things here class 2A championship game there you see coach Dennis Gatcho. He just took the job a year ago. He's also the athletic director, assistant principal, and teaches three classes in industrial technology. Couldn't find a coach at the summer of 98, so he took the job, and here he is. One year later, he's in the state finals. He says, I think I'll keep it for a while. 
on first down. Again, the give is to Jason Schroeder, and Schroeder, who has really come on strong during the playoff run, good for another five across the 35. You think Dennis Gatchel is a real well-organized man? I think he's got to be, I guess. He's wearing a lot of hats. I saw him in the locker room taping ankles, so add that to his resume. So many of the small schools, obviously, not only the players, but the faculty has got a lot of different things to do. And the community absolutely loves it. Second down, gain of five. From the eye, Major gives it to the tailback. Wilson, and Wilson stacked up by... The Cardinals defensive front five, led by number eight, Kenny Sulser, the nose man, David Banks. Makes his second tackle, Banks at 5'11", 190. And then it'll be kind of interesting as we watch this game, how often they run to the left. Now, there is a reason why they would be running to the left, because on their right side, which would be the defensive left for Stillman Value, Val Valley is Babcock at 6'4", 300 pounds, and also Brant Bennett, who are their two best defensive players. They are on Meridian's right side. So it'll be interesting to see if they run away from them continually. Passing situation here on third and six. Derek Smith. Notice all the jumping the around. That's what we're talking about. And Wendell, the junior in there. Another wide receiver. Pursuit. Major lets it fly. It's a jump ball, but it's out of bounds. Caught by Wendell, but... Well out of bounds over by the Hawks bench. It'll bring up a fourth down, and they will be kicking Jack into a pretty stiff wind. Well, this will be a very interesting punt because in, there's two differences here. Number one, the snapper has a very strong wind, and this, oftentimes he can snap it over the head of the punter, and then all of a sudden now the punter is kicking into a very strong wind. So it, it does have its advantages and its disadvantages. Now Cox, Jason Kenyon will be back there. Fair catch called for by number 27, A.J. Brierton. So good field position just inside their own 40-yard line for the Cardinals after the 26-yard punt and no return. Stillman Valley will line up this way as you look at their coach, Mike Lawler. His second year at Stillman Valley, and he played on a championship team back about 10 years ago. He's only 10 years out of high school, Jack. How does that make us feel? Well, how do you think I feel sitting here with you? A young guy <laughs> like me and him. On first down. And they give the ball to... Actually, Buster hangs on to it. And the 6'2 uh, junior quarterback thrown for a loss of about one as we show you the offense. Banks, Wills, Phillips, Connell, and there is Pat Babcock at 300 pounds, the right tackle. Three Bs, Busser, Briarton, and Bennett do most of the offensive work. Cody Rudsell and Brown are the receivers. And here on second down, breaking through is Brad Bennett. Bennett at 6'2", 215 is going to take a lot of folks with him as he gains about seven yards. Brought down by Chris Renfro, the inside linebacker, number 44. There's Renfro. And we conversely talked about how, how Meridian will be running away from the certain side that Babcock's on. Watch Stillman Value run behind him. And the wishbone, they give it to the right halfback, and that would be Tom Renson. Interesting that Briarton hasn't touched the ball yet. Renson at 5'11", brought down by Jason Trotter. Ryan Murray, Joe South, couple of fine seniors there anchoring the line. Tanner Cole, Adam Turnage, and Johnson. Trotter and Renfro, the inside backers. And Derek Smith, Wilson, Dustin McWhorter, Shane Major, the quarterback, also plays the safety spot. Now on first down. And this is Briarton getting his first carry. And he gets a gain of about six. Joe South, number 83, 6'4", 210 pound senior makes the tackle on A.J. Briarton. Briarton, we were talking in the opening, 5'8", 157 pounds. Has got breakaway speed at this level. And the option, quarterback keeps it, Brad Busser. Brian Busser, and Busser will be short of a first down. They need about two. Derek Smith coming up from the cornerback spot to uh, make the stop. 
Well, they run interesting types of offense over on the Cardinal side. They've got some wishbone. They've got some double wing. They'll break the wishbone. Jack, you're going to have a, a wonderful time analyzing all of this. Well, who do you think they're going to run behind right now? Third and one. Uh, right there, up the middle, Bennett. And Bennett gets to the 35-yard line of Meridian. And it'll be first and ten. Stillman Valley, opening sequence for them, 6.38 to go, first quarter. Notice the wedge blocking right there, running behind center, number 55, Andy Phillips. He's a little midget at 163, but the right side, 205 and 300 coming down behind him. Wing back right, here's the pitch to Bryant, and gets around the corner. And a nice play coming up by the linebacker. Dusty, uh, Dustin McWhorter, actually, the, the left cornerback. And McWhorter was, was vulnerable in the semifinal. Uh, a lot of balls came his way. And I know that uh, the Cardinals saw that on film. And when Buster chooses to throw, he might go in that direction. Ninth play of the drive coming up here on second down. Straight ahead this time is Bennett. And Bennett will be close to a first down inside the 30. You know, Justin, Dustin McWhorter made a big play on there because he had a lot of running room around that corner, and he closed it pretty quickly. He could be a stronger run defender than he is a pass defender, which oftentimes you'll find in high school football. Tenth play of the drive, all on the ground so far, and they give it to Briarton, and Briarton quickly wrapped up by Turnage, number 80, number 67. Excellent play by the defensive right tackle. And also number 83, Joe South. Just the power play off tackle, doubling out. And Joe South, an all-stater, 6'4", 210-pound tackle, makes the play. Fourth and one, and I, again, I wonder who you're running behind. And the wishbone set. And they give it straight ahead to Bennett. And this is going to be close. He had to get just shy of the 25. I think he got it, Mike. It seems to be, but we'll wait for the official word. And that's it. It is a first down. The offensive line surge is the key here. Watch them coming off the ball. You can see how far up the field they're getting. And the back gets in quick behind them on a dive or power play. It's very hard to stop them from two yards. First and ten from the 25. The wishbone set again. And they belly it to Bennett, and Bennett to the outside. To the 21, close to the 20-yard line. Or he's knocked out of bounds by Shane Major, the safety. He's a big, strong runner, 6'2", 215 pounds. Had 1,200 yards during the regular season on 176 carries, 15 touchdowns, and his average is 7 yards a carry. He gained a four, call it second and six. And this time it is, once again, the off halfback, Tom Remsen, for short yardage. Stopped by Clint Wilson, the safety. You know, part of this drive, the key to this goes back to that punt return. On AstroTurf, one of the golden rules is that punt returner never allow that ball to hit the turf, because then you're going to get a 20-yard bounce in many cases against you. So that was a great job of catching the ball. Now whistle blows before the play gets snapped, and that usually means a legal start against the offense. Take the ball back from the third and fourth. The dead third ball, line. ball start on the offense. Our referee today, Greg Linden from Oak Lawn, makes the call. Somebody jumped before the snap. I guess. I guess. They've got, of course, that's why they're down there. They've got better eyes than we do. Passing situation. Double wing set now. And Busser turns oh, it up. Touchdown. Brian Busser, touchdown Cardinals. Well, the play screen pass. But Buster had his own ideas going up the left side. 29 yards. 
Well, he was able to get the corner on the option, and the linebackers and the safety overplayed the pitch man. You can see right here, he's coming inside, and right over the top there, you saw that they played the pitch man too high. He broke underneath and had a clear sailing into the end zone. Officially 24 yards. Meanwhile, a Meridian player is down at about the 10-yard line. Shows you great athleticism there by Brian Buser. Now, during the season, he carried the ball 127 times for 590 yards and 10 touchdowns. And if my math serves me correctly, that's about a 4.8-yard average. Good job. Good Thank job. You. Didn't know he ever taught math. That's Adam Turnage shaking up. Seems to be okay. And here comes the kick from Trent Brown. Extra point attempt. With the tailwind and right through the upright. So... Three minutes, 47 seconds to go first quarter. A lengthy march by the Cardinals of Stillman Valley. They lead it 7-0. We'll be back in just a minute. Stillman Valley has scored first. They lead by a touch and a point. Let's go to Mitch Robinson. Mike and Jack, you may have noticed on that offensive drive by Stillman Valley, very reminiscent of a very successful team in the late 80s, early 90s. The Belvedere Bucks, who were a state champion, they ran the wishbone, no huddle, pretty much what Stillman Valley likes to do. Mike Lawler likes to do it, so the defense doesn't get any rest. Back to you guys. 13 plays, 60 yards, all on the ground. Kenyon's kick. Smith at the three. Check it, it's Wilson. Across the 20. And he is brought down by Nat Cox, number 33, after a 20-yard return. And the Hawks will be on offense for the second time behind Shane Major. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of Fox Sportsnet, Intersport, and the IHSA, and Jack McInerney is strictly prohibited. That covers just about everything. It sure does. And everyone from their own 25, the Hawks, Send two receivers wide right. Shane Major, the quarterback. And the pitch back. Wilson, short of the 30-yard line. Mike Lawler's team, 13 plays, 60 yards, five minutes off the clock, and that 24-yard option keeper by Brian Busser. Put his team on the board here in the first quarter. Well, whenever you have a long scoring drive, you've got to thank the offensive linemen because they certainly are key contributors. Quick hit to Trotter, and Trotter also short yardage across the 30. Keith Rader, the defensive end at 6'1", 175, the senior making the stop. You'll notice up front, Stillman Valley usually starts out in a 5-2 defense, but what they're doing is sliding that defensive front, strong side and weak side, to throw off the blocking schemes for Meridian. Passing situation here, and the Hawks don't throw very often. Straight drop major. He's got his man, number 23, Ryan Murray, but he's going to be well short for the first down. Murray showing the good hands he's known for. Takes it across the 30, but he's about three yards shy. Depending on that was the linebacker, Colby Johnson. There you see Colby, number 83. And it'll bring up a punting situation for Jason Trotter. There it is, the wind. And the wind just takes this and knocks it right down. Takes a little bit of a meridian bounce across the 50-yard line. But again, it'll be great field position for Stillman Valley. Only a 21-yard kick. No return. Well, we hope you return tonight for the 3A football championship. Fox Sportsnet exclusive coverage of the IHSA championships continues. The Class 3A game between two undefeated, Byron and St. Joseph Ogden. Kickoff tonight at 7, only on Fox Sportsnet. So the folks on Route 72 are having a big day. That's where Stillman Valley is. That's where Byron is. These teams are rivals during the regular season, but obviously pulling for each other one game after the other. Green has declined. 
First down. From a coaching standpoint, Mike, it's all it's always nice to play on a 50 yard field when you get this kind of field position. You know, here's a team that controlled the ball for five minutes and basically they were only 10 yards further in that drive. Now they're on the 50. It's nice to play with a short field and they're working against the team again with nine two way players. Bennett getting four, maybe five yards before he's brought down by Looks like Justin Johnson and into the wishbone on a second and about five. Here's the give and almost breaking away is Briard and coming out of that left halfback spot. You cannot overlook him for a minute. Wilson and Major on the stop, but a first down and more. A 10 yard scamper for uh, A.J. Briarton. It's a nice play. They showed power going in one direction. They just came back with a real quick counter dive to him for a nice gain. One receiver slid left, but again, they stay on the ground. And this time, Bennett gets across the 35. And Ryan Murray has had a busy day already today, both on offense and defense, making the stop. You see the clock coming up to the final minute 15 and pass to the first quarter. Go to a double wing on second and eight. And again, the flag before the snap. This happens oftentimes when you have a double wing, when they go into a quick motion, the defensive player on the motion side has a Dead tendency ball to foul. jump. Encroachment on the defense. And that's exactly what happened. When the wing went in motion, the outside linebacker jumped, and in high school football, all you'd have to do is physically cross that plane. You do not have to make contact, and it's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Now it's second and three. And the cross. Briarton, first down inside the 25. And again, right, running behind that big right side of the offensive line, behind right guard Kyle Connell and number 79, Pat Babcock. You can see right here, power play, Babcock blocking down, getting two backs out in front, kicking out. Just good hard running, power football. McWhorter on the stop, but it's first and 10. Again, the double wing set. Briarton in motion, Busser. Oh, balls loose, and the Cardinals caught a break. They sure now that was a good example of the linebackers and the corners overplaying the pitch man. Quarterback really should have turned up. Just watch the dive fake. There's your wingman. Now see they're overrunning him right there. That was a poor judgment by the quarterback. Poor decision to pitch it because even if he had caught it, he would have got nothing. Right. And Busser was in better shape. Meanwhile, they picked up three yards extra on the fumble. Briarton on a quick hit. And Briarton inside the ten. A.J. Briarton brought down as he gets the first down. The Cardinals fans have had a good quarter. Nice call here. You'll see the quick counter right here. Counter trap coming back inside. They've been running power to the right, and the linebackers are flying out of there, and they come right back inside with the trap. Cody Bush the stop. First and goal. Remsen. And he is down to the three. Tom Remsen has been doing more than his share of the offensive work so far. Final seconds of the first quarter will tick off without a play. So they will do a 95-yard march to start the second. That's the end of the first quarter. Here at Memorial Stadium in beautiful Champaign-Urbana, the Class 2A championship, Stillman Valley leads Meridian by a score of 7 to nothing, and the Cardinals are knocking at the door. Start of the second quarter, Stillman Valley ran one play with Bennett just inside the one yard line. And we've got some motion. That looked like somebody on the right side. Stillman Valley move. And that'll cost him five. And the right tackle, try to get a jump. And down there, it's so important to sit. Well, statistics often don't tell a story. This time they do. Stillman Valley really just 
dominating that quarter. 108 yards to 22 on the ground. Nobody's thrown the ball. Well, one pass from uh, Meridian. Now third and goal. And here's the pitch. Ryerson thrown for a loss. Terrific defensive play by McWhorter. Number 80, we were telling you about his being vulnerable in the semifinals. Well, he came up big right there. This was just really well defended. Of course, they don't have to worry about the pass, so they can play the run here. Great job of forcing the quarterback to make a decision, and then just great pursuit here by the defensive backs and linebackers. Very well defended. On fourth down, they will set up for a 26-yard field goal. Trent Brown is the kicker. Very strong win he's kicking into, and it's a cross win. And he's kicking into the teeth of it. Kenyon the holder, the kick is up, but it's hooking to the left. And it is wide left. Hold on one second, Got whistles are blowing. Could have a rough in the kicker. Down on the field, looks like. Uh, we have roughing the kicker on the green. First down. That is a back breaker. The it was round no it was shaken up. The kick was off to the left. We'll show it to you here. It was wide. And Clint Wilson came in and just cut his legs out from under him. Well, he really came in and caught him with the backs of his legs as he was diving past. That was a real tough call. But that's high school football. Those breaks are what turns games around. Well, the coach AD and the assistant principal are looking on. First down. Close to a touchdown, Remsen's got it. Tom Remsen gets the score after the penalty, and Stillman Valley has got a 13-point lead. It is really amazing how one play can make a turn. Here they are, they hold them on fourth down. The kick is wide, and get a rough in the kicker call. Get a first down and run right in behind them. Great power, great surge here, great leg drive. Well, Smith and Jason Trotter tried to stop him, but could not. This time the kick is up from the other side of the field, and Brown's kick is good. 10-19 left to go in the first half, and it has been all Cardinals thus far. 14-0 Stillman Valley. Well, Stillman Valley had some kind of semifinal. They dropped 45 points on Fulton in the first half and then put it on cruise control, won that game 45 to 6. Now, it's certainly not a blowout of any proportions now, but it's been all dominance from the Cardinals. There's Remsen's score. Let's go down to Mitch Robinson. Okay. Hey guys, uh, listening in on the Meridian huddle, coming out before Stillman scored their touchdown, talking about the defensive line, they just are getting outsized out, man, they can't get low enough. Offensively, don't be surprised to see them put it up. They have the win, they have a good quarterback, and this is the, where they want to attack, so they could get right back in. Guys? All right, Mitch. Average field position, the 44-yard line starting out for Stillman Valley, for Meridian, the 22, so... Well, play an 80-yard field, which would you rather have, an 80-yard field or a 40-yard field? And, of course, with the running game that Stillman Valley has, they're really taking advantage of that 40-yard field. They'll also have the wind at the back of the Hawks now as they try to swim the kick and whistles again. And we get an offside. Somebody ahead of the kicker. Well, an interesting thought. Try to bounce that kick instead of trying to boom it into the wind. Well, you you need to remember on this that also they can call for a fair catch on this. So the kick returning team on a kickoff can call for a fair catch. I agree. I wouldn't want to put it up in the, in the air and let it hang. I'd punch it down, let the Astro turf do its thing. Smith in the middle of the three return men, and they'll again bounce it through and picked up by... The Hawks, looks like Jason Trotter, number 33, one of the up men there. And it's actually Murray, number 23. And this will be the best field position that Meridian has had since the ball game began. Well, as we mentioned in the open, Mike, 
they have nine two-way players for this team, and they've already taken a pounding in that first quarter, and so uh, things can get tougher for them. In the eye with a wing set. In motion, they give it to the tailback, and Wilson dropped behind the line by number 57, Kyle Connell, the linebacker. Connell helped out by David Banks. There is Kyle. He rotates to that inside linebacker spot. 6'2", 205-pound senior. He was untouched. Nobody blocked him. I think it was a missed assignment on that call because he was just sitting there twiddling his thumbs waiting for that back. Loss of two. Major to throw. And again, it's out of bounds. Intended for Wendell. Brad Winderland, the sophomore defending here as Wendell the junior. Well, the cause for this incompletion was the pressure that he got right here. He had to hang on to it too long, and consequently, the receiver ends up running out of boundary. So he has, it really is the pressure he got up front that was the, the key to that being an, an incomplete pass. Brings up a third and 12 from the 40. Draw on the draw. Wilson gets 10, but he will be about a yard short to midfield just over midfield they had to get inside the 49 beamer the sophomore from the safety position coming up on the stop but it'll bring up fourth and one interesting decision here well it's awful early but the way that uh, stillman valley has controlled the ball uh he they have the win here now meridian they could punt it right down in the hole and that's and that's what they want to do and let them work with a you know, a 90-yard field rather than a 40-yard field and see how they do. Trotter will kick. Cox goes back in single safety, but get a whistle for a timeout. There is Jason Trotter. You know, I'm sure that uh, some people at home might say, well, you only have a yard. Why not go for it on the 50? But the problem is you give the ball up and you don't make it here. They're playing with a shorter field, and they've controlled the football. 8.48 to go, first half. We'll be back right after these words. The Hawks fans, representing their team well, made the trip over from the Decatur area. Stillman Valley, of course, coming a little further away from the northeast part of the state. Trotter will punt it now from his own 40. Again, with a 15-mile-an-hour wind at his back. Ooh and almost has it blocked. Astro bounce right there. Oh. And into the end zone. Wilson almost was able to down it. But the ball goes into the end zone. Jack, you called it 51-yard kick. A lot of that roll, but uh, he did his job. Jason Trotter did punting it. And now... Stillman Valley is going to have to work from a long field. High School Hoops tips off this Sunday at the inaugural Blue Cross Blue Shield Classic. Providence St. Mel takes on Whitney Young. Westinghouse takes on Peoria Richwood. Chicago Julian plays Peoria Manuel. Live coverage of all three games starts Sunday at noon, only on Fox Sportsnet. As we come back to live action, and this is Briarton. Short game. With Stillman Valley, you don't have a chance to go to the refrigerator, get a Coke or a, or a bag of potato chips. They're ready on the ball. They take the play from the sideline, a signal from the sideline, and they're off and running. Pick up of two. Bennett, Remsen, Briarton, the backfield. Behind Busser, the quarterback. And Bennett, quick hit, quick hole. 35. Before he is dragged on down by Shane Major, the safety. 15-yard run and a first down for Brad Bennett. Great blocking at the point of attack, which is on the left side of your screen. Right there. Look how everybody's walled off. Nice job by the wide receivers blocking on the corners. 
Nice run, nice game. And a good play by the safety, Shane Major, to come in. He was originally blocked on that play and came up to make the stop. Busted play, and Buster's going to get something out of that. A lot of whistle. The ball was down, says the Cardinals. Say the Cardinals and say the officials. His momentum was stopped when the whistle was blown. And uh, again, high school football, when that whistle blow is blown and the momentum is stopped. Justin Johnson there thought he may have had one. He's a former fullback. He knew how to run with it when he got it, but it's now second down and six. Again, it's Bennett. Gets wrapped up by Jason Crowder, but he is close to a first down. Chris Renfro also in on the stop, number 44. There's, there's Bennett. Good size high school fullback at 6'2", 215. And he does save him some breakaway speed. His longest run of his, of his 15 touchdowns this year was 85 yards. Third down efficiency, three out of four for Stillman Valley. And this looks like it's going to be four out of five. Wilson stops Bennett, but not before they move the chains. 14-0, Stillman Valley and White with the ball in the lead. They have just dominated. They have not had to throw. They have just ground this out. And they go into the wishbone on first down from their own 49. Remsen, who has a touchdown today, picks up four. The surge of that offensive line for Stillman Valley is really amazing. All you have to do is watch where the ball is snapped from and then watch where the offensive linemen end up. And you'll get a good feel for the gain that those backs will be making. See where the, I'm sorry, Jack. See where the mark is now where those linemen are. Let's see how far ahead of that line they get on their surge. Second down again, the whistle. And looked like one of the defensive linemen may have been guilty of encroachment, or was he drawn off by the offense. Let's get the official word. From the dead ball foul, encroachment on the defense. First down. First down. Everything's working the Cardinals way. South to north and north to south, they are marching. Right now, they're marching south. This is Remsen. Nothing spectacular. From the wishbone, Remsen gets three. Trotter again. He's credited for at least four tackles right now. And Remsen may have either pulled a muscle or like a finger. hurt his hand. Finger, yeah. It's like a thumb. I did that yesterday, reaching for a, a turkey leg. I'm sure you did. On second down, and the pitch, and a nice play by Major corrals Briarton for a loss. Five tackles for Shane Major. You know, it's kind of interesting. Meridian can't stop them inside, but they do a great job on the perimeter plays. Great pursuit, great angles, excellent open field tackling. Shane Major, the quarterback, also playing safety. So A.J. thrown back to the 40-yard line and third and 10. Could see the first pass here. Well, guess again. And Briarton is going to be snowed under one more time. Number 83, Joe South, leading a wave of green. Chris Rinfro in there as well, and we will have not the first pass, but the first punt we expect from Brant Bennett. Bennett averages 31 yards a kick. He's gotten off a 54-yarder this year, but probably not into a 15-mile-an-hour win. Wilson, the defect number seven. Oh. And this one. He's like a lose yardage on this. Ouch. Ast yeah, AstroTurf and a win. Not a good combination. It didn't get to the line of scrimmage. Minus two 
Dave Berkson, our uh, official unofficial statistician, tells us. I think he took his eye off the last second here. Yeah, well, look how he dropped the ball. Well, oh, my. The wind, actually, when he dropped it, took it a little bit. Sean Landetta, where are you? <laughs> okay, so a break for the Hawks. Good field position, their own 43. And the nose man had the quarterback, and the ball is free. The nose man, Kenny Salsa, we told you about him at 5'8", 150. He was in the backfield just after the snap. Well, he usually plays on the center, and as we watch the game, you'll see him moving around. He's now over the guard. You can see his quick move right there in the A-gap between the center and the guard, and he just out quick. The center blocking back on him and made the play. Somehow, Major managed to pitch the ball to Wilson, who got the ball back to about the line of scrimmage. So it's second and ten. Wing left, receiver split right. And again, a whistle. Flags fly, whistles blow. Greg Linden, here's the call. Dead ball foul, full start on the offense. By Stillman Valley moving those defensive linemen around, they're confusing the offensive calls of Meridian, and oftentimes those offensive linemen jump when they see that movement, and uh, it's not uncommon with linemen. Davis Gatchel looking on as his team is marching backwards. There's a penalty situation. Each team penalized three times. Second and 15. From the 38. Page is being chased by Bennett. Now he's being chased by Banks, and Banks gets it. The sack for David Banks is third of the season. And a loss of 17. All the way back to the 21. What leads to this is good coverage downfield, but good penetration by the defensive end. He just starts scrambling, a la Frank Tar uh, Fran Tarkington. But uh, very difficult when you have all those people in your face. We are showing our age. We're bringing up Fran, Fran Tarkington. We're bringing up Sean Landetta. Good pressure there by Bennett. Runs him right back into David Banks. Nice third, third down in the county. Three-step drop. Got him. And he's got him out. Oh, first down. Derek Smith. His sure-handed fastest receiver at 5'10", 150. 28th catch. And Smith, 37 yards. And the crowd on the Hawks side comes alive. 37-yard reception, and he needed 36 for a first down. Look at this right here. You talk about putting the ball on the money. Nice route, nice catch. Excellent throw. Remember, he's throwing with the wind here, but over the cornerback, Jason Kenyon. So the Hawks are in business. Meridian first and 10 from the Cardinals, 42 have trouble picking up 10 yards for a first down you pick it up on 37 yards for a first down window in motion murray makes his second catch and he gets close to the 35 yard line as the offense starts to cook for meridian winterland in to make the stop number 24 the cornerback time running down here in the second quarter 14 nothing stillman valley meridian now with its First offensive thrust. Quickly back to the line. On second down. Bennett wraps up Major. No doubt about that. Across the 45. He came right off the edge. Nobody blocked him on the outside. Came right off the edge, and he kind of rolled right into it as far as the quarterback's movement. And Bennett making a big... Big move defense. You can see him coming right off the edge, right there. Nobody touches him. 6'2", 215 pounds, good athlete, and he's going to make the play. Now, it's interesting you see a 
Well, before we talk about that, let's go down to Mitch. He's got something much more interesting to tell us, right, Mitchell? That's right, Mike. You know, the action heating up here now. Stay with us at halftime. We'll have another IHSA interview, plus the scores and highlights from earlier in this game. That's at halftime right here on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Mike, Jack? You're right. That was much more interesting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're warm enough down there, Mitch? Oh, it's nice. Okay. <laughs> Remember, this is the time of year where you can have three seasons in one day, and none of them is summer. Well, I, yesterday I played golf before turkey. Yeah. And here I am right now, kind of chilled, kind of chilled. Yeah. Yeah. But I noticed your compassion. You're not offering me your I, coat, but I, I, I thought about it. It is Thanksgiving. And some turkey didn't bring his coat. That's <laughs> yes. a minute 16 to go. First half. Meridian under coach Dennis Gatchel trailing and now facing a third and 12 with a 14 nothing deficit. Well, they did something on third down last time with 37 yards. Here they just need 12. Major with some time and has it batted down. Looks like Banks number 92 of Bennett again got a hand on it. Well, they give it to you-know-who, number 79, Babcock. He probably just hit it with his belly button, maybe. Yeah. Now, 6'4", 300 pounds. Look at the mobility here. Now, he was last year's state heavyweight wrestling champion. So, at 300 pounds, he moves extremely well. There he is, Pat Babcock. His brother, Sean, finished second at state in wrestling at the 171. So, he's sort of like a mini Babcock. His brother was 171, he's 300 he's 300 pounds. 300. Yeah, that's a lot of turkey at that table. I was going to say, I wonder who was in the middle of the table where the plate was. <laughs> Always sit in the middle. That way it passes you twice coming from both ends. You'll learn that when you're in a family of five boys. Dennis Gatchel's got about 40 of his boys around him right now facing a 14-point problem. And a fourth down and 12 with a minute 10 to go from the 44-yard line. The situation that they're having now is they really are being overwhelmed by the defensive front of Stillman Valley. They're getting beat in the trenches. I mean, it comes down to that, and it's not uh, that they're not a good football team, obviously. They just are physically being beat on. Well, if you're looking for the best coverage of IHSA sports anywhere in Illinois, look no further than Chicago Tribune Preps Plus. Each week, Eric Collins gives you all the scores and highlights from the biggest high school events in the state. Preps Plus, Sunday after the NFL this morning, only on Fox Sports Net. Cardinals fans in full regalia, and the Hawks fans trying to get their team to make something happen here. They had a 37-yard completion. And this time Trotter will kick it away on oh, fourth down. Well, Trotter did his job. McWhorter down there trying to get his hands on it, but couldn't quite make it. So the ball will come out to the 20 with a minute four to go, and uh, that was a 44-yard punt, no return. They just missed on both of their last two punts of getting that ball inside the five and it's just that extra bounce on that turf gives them field position Stillman Valley out on the 20. Again the wishbone and Buster not taking any chances we'll just wedge this one out and apparently we say apparently be content to take his team to the locker room with a two touchdown lead going into the wind it's highly unlikely that they will try to do any kind of fancy offensive work here. They'll just take the lead and get some hot chocolate and a lecture at halftime and come out and do some more if they can. They'll just wait until the clock goes under 25 and they'll snap it and that'll do it for the half. All right, so that looks to be it as both teams will head to the locker room, Stillman Valley and Meridian. That man, Mike Lawler, has got his team ahead by 14 to nothing. That man must have something up his sleeve, and we'll see what it is. That's the end of the second quarter at the 2A championship.
with Stillman Valley ahead of Meridian by a count of 14 to nothing. What a half for the Cardinals, Jack. Well, field position's been a big factor. And let's go down to Mitch Robinson. A lot, Mike, uh, looking at the first half, obviously the guy's running well behind your offensive line. Uh, what do you want to talk to him about at the halftime? Well, I think we've had some real costly penalties there a couple times at some key points and, and a couple plays where I, we could have got that third score and would have been uh, awfully big there right before half. With the wind the way it is, I know Meridian would like to throw it, but at least for a quarter, half the game, they're going to be going against that wind. You think, feel confident you can shut down the run even more? Yeah, you know, we'll kind of load up a little bit on them uh, when, when, when they don't have the wind and uh, try to put some pressure on them that way. So far, so good, though. Good luck to you in the second half. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Mike, back to you. Mitchell, appreciate it. There's the words from Mike Lawler. Pretty confident. Uh, he was a defensive lineman, offensive lineman over at Marion Central. We'll be back with halftime activities right here at the University of Illinois. Stay with us. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Halftime here at the Class 2A Championship. The Cardinals of Stillman Valley over Meridian by a count of 14 to nothing. Jack, this is a team that has not had to throw a single pass. Well, you know, we talked about it in the open, the offensive line, and of course Meridian has nine players going both ways. It takes its toll, and Stillman Valley kept pounding the ball the entire first half, pounding and pounding, and that wears on you. It's interesting because Stillman Valley is the exception rather than the rule in terms of small schools. They only have three, sometimes four players who are two-way players. Most times you'll find just the roster flip-flops and uh, you know everybody goes two ways. Here, especially when you've got a Pat Babcock plowing his way through you know, your defense and then plowing his way through your offensive line, that's a pretty formidable uh, deal that, they've have to do, that they have to uh, work on in the second half. Well, they really do, and I don't know that there's any chalkboard that you can make a change in, for what's going to happen in the second half. It really is not the fact that, that they don't have the ability. They don't have the size. They're, they don't have the depth. They have nine players going both ways. That's not a halftime half talk that coaches can make. They got to say, well, look at our conditioning. Is it going to pay off in the second half? The wind is a factor, Mike, a big factor. Another thing that's very interesting is this Meridian team has really changed its offensive plan. It used to be more of a passing team. Only in the past few games during the playoffs has it gone more to the run. Looks like we're going to see more of the ball in the air uh, when we come back in the second half. Meanwhile, Mitch Robinson will talk with Assistant Executive Secretary Dave Ganaway of the IHSA, and we'll have more when we come back. Welcome back to Champaign. Halftime of the Class 2A State Championship. Stillman Valley leading Meridian 14-0. I'm Mitch Robinson. Joining me now, the Assistant Executive Director of the IHSA, Dave Ganaway. And, and Dave, uh, first, I, I guess I have to ask you right off the bat, how do you like the job? I enjoy it. It's just been uh, quite a great move for me, and people have been very supportive, and it's just been wonderful getting started here. Let's talk about this year's playoffs. Usually we're at Redbird uh, over at uh, IS ISU, and uh, they were playing so well, we thought they'd have playoff games over there, so you had to make changes. How much trouble was it to get you guys down here? Well, uh, we waited as long as we could to try and see how long ISU could go with the decision, and then we had to make the decision, and once... Uh, ISU said we want to save the rights for our home team, and, and I am glad they did because now they are at home, and Todd Berry, we wish them all the luck in the world tomorrow. But making the move down here, I, U of I has been just wonderful working with it. Short planning, but everybody's jumped in and just done a great job. How happy are you? you? You said to me before, okay, we got one in the books, we're into the second game. How, how tough a weekend, how many hours are we talking for you and your staff over the course of this weekend? Well, there's a lot of hours. You know, we, we started in here uh, early this morning. Uh, U of I was here before we were their staff, though, but uh, we'll be here till 10:30, 11 o'clock tonight, and then up 7 tomorrow morning, back at it again, and then close out Sunday, packing up and taking everything back. So it's a long weekend, but it's a very enjoyable weekend, especially now. The work's over, really. Anything uh, strike you so far? I mean, the first game, we had a great game here. Have you been uh, pleasantly pleased by the way these teams are performing? Oh, yeah, I've been very, very pleased. In fact, I've been pleased with the whole tournament down here right now. There, there's a lot of uh, a lot of anxiousness set inside me coming down. But right now, after we got game one over with and we're setting into game two now, uh, I'm pretty relaxed sitting here thinking, gee, this is pretty nice. You and I will touch base after game six. How's that? That'll be great. Great. Thanks to have you, and uh, enjoy the second half of this one, and then we'll, uh, I'm sure I'll see you up there for game three. You betcha. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Dave. Stay with us when we come back from halftime. First half highlights with Mike.
14-0 Stillman Valley over Meridian, the Class 2A state championship at halftime, along with Jack McInerney. I'm Mike Lederman. You look at the highlights of this one, Jack, it has been all Stillman Valley, although Meridian had a chance in the second quarter, couldn't quite convert. Well, they need to take advantage of the win. That's going to be a fact in the second half. They had a, a third and 35, and they threw a 37-yard pass with the win. Right. Now, you're not going to be able to do that in the second half on any kind of a consistent basis. So they're going to have to make sure that they take advantage of their running game into the win and be able to throw when they have the win at their back. And, of course, another part of it is the special teams with this win. It makes a big difference, especially with the AstroTurf. And also these teams, neither of which is terribly adept at passing. Stillman Valley still hasn't thrown a pass, hasn't had to. Meridian is more likely to throw normally, and they're actually going to be forced into it now. Let's take a look at some of the highlights because right away, Stillman Valley kicked off. Meridian went three and out. Stillman Valley gets the ball. This finishes a 60-yard drive here with Brian Buster, the quarterback. Well, he just ran the option. In the uh, corner overran the pitch man. He cut underneath him at a nice run for their first touchdown. Now and here, a, Trent, sorry, yeah, Trent Brown a... trying to kick, and it is wide left, but Wilson, a little bit overzealous, and the roughing the kicker penalty leads to a touchdown. And that, those big plays like that in high school football will come back to haunt you. Here's the pass we talked about. They needed 35 yards. They got 37. And now that's with the win. And here, Shane Major, the quarterback, meet Grant Bennett, fullback, and defensive lineman. And that put the end to that particular uh, attempt at a score. Well, there's the statistical, well, there are the statistics, and it's all Stillman Valley, even though no yardage passing. It's going to be tough in the second half because a lot of those things you can't interchange. There's no second team lineman that's going to make a difference for you as far as Meridian's concerned. They're playing with the same kids. They're undermanned somewhat with nine players going both ways. The offensive line of, Stil of Stillman Valley has really made the difference in the first half, and I'm sure it will in the second half. And the offensive line is led by number 79, someone who may very easily be playing here next season. 300-pound uh, Pat Babcock. Okay, so you know Meridian is going to come out. They're a championship team. They are undefeated. They've got a lot to accomplish. They're down two touchdowns. It's not insurmountable. We'll see what happens when we come back here at Memorial Stadium on Thanksgiving weekend. Back at halftime, ready for the start of the third quarter. It is dusk here in Champaign-Urbana on the campus of the University of Illinois along with Jack McInerney. I'm Mike Lederman. Let us go down now to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, Coach. Uh, Halftime, uh, what'd you talk to the guys? Obviously, I, I, you got to try to stop Stillman Valley's run. The, we're, we're getting beat in the line of scrimmage. We need to get off the ball. We need to be play, play better up front, our offensive line, our defensive line. Is this win a big factor? Because I know you, you guys have the ability to pass when you're going against the win. How tough is it? It is tough. It's blowing a little stronger than I thought earlier. As guys up deep, it's only 14 nothing. so one score, you're right back in it. Right. We've come back from scores like this before. We need to play together as a team and get after it. All right, go get them. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Mike, back to you. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, Stillman Valley, 14 nothing. Meridian has called itself a second-half team. They say they do not wear down, despite the fact that so many of their players are two-way players. Obviously, heat will not be a factor, but they're just getting plain out muscled by a very physical Stillman Valley group of Cardinals. Well, I think it's a, it's also a combination of what uh, Stillman is doing up front defensively. They're moving around a lot, which is throwing off the blocking schemes of Meridian's offensive line. And this is something that is confusing for high school players, especially when you go two ways because you don't spend that much time exclusively as an offensive lineman. For example, if you're in college, all you do is work on different blocking schemes. When you're in high school, you're going both ways. Part of the practice is on defensive line. The other part you'll spend on offensive line. So it does make a difference from a coaching standpoint. For Meridian, Shane Major will kick off when the time comes. There you look at the Cardinals ahead by two touchdowns. As Mike Lawler said, it could have been three. But then Meridian had a real chance to stop him on the second one, a roughing the kicker penalty on a missed field goal, set up a first down that led to a touchdown. And now we're going to have the, uh, the captains meet. There is Pat Babcock, whose birthday, I think, was July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. <laughs> Very good. I don't know. And 
Shane Major for the Hawks. I remember Pat Babcock, we did the, of course, the state wrestling championships right across the street over at the assembly hall. And Babcock has been his opponent uh, in the second period, about, uh, well, early third period, I think, about five minutes in. Well, I think what college coaches like about a young man like that, the size is quite obvious, but the fact that he has great feet and moves so well and has agility, and usually when you have a wrestler, they have agility, and that's per uh, what he possesses. It's good agility for a big man. Well, Stillman Valley with the choice. Uh, rather, Meridian with the choice. They had deferred. They're taking the win. So, Meridian will get the ball here. As it goes into the end zone off the foot of uh, Kenyon. And Shane Major and company will start from uh, their own 20-yard line. This is going to be a real important drive because if they have to punt into this strong wind, if they don't if they don't move the ball here in this series, and they have to punt from down here, they're going to turn the ball over to Still Stillman Valley in the middle of the field. They cannot afford to do that. They have to get a couple first downs, and then if they have to punt it from the middle of the field, at least they can put Stillman Valley down the hole. Very important drive here. Trotter is the setback, and he takes the handoff. Gains short yardage going into the right side of the Cardinals line. Stopped by the nose tackle, Kenny Solson, number eight. Colby Johnson, the linebacker, number 83. Usually in a game like this, it's a big concern to coaches early. I know fans don't think about it being this early, but it's very, very important to have a good drive here because this could make the difference in the field position for the entire second half. As you say, there are only two touchdowns down. Second man through it is Wilson. And once again, the linebacker Number 83, Colby Johnson, takes him down. And it's going to come up third and six. Now, from a passing situation, they have safe conservative throws here. It could be screens and, of course, a draw or a sprint out where you get out on the perimeter. They haven't done well inside the tackle, so they need to get outside. Maybe a sprint out. Renfro split left. On third and six, looking for him, got him, first down. What Chris Winfro makes his first reception, gets across the 30. Jason Kenyon, the cornerback, makes the stop, but not before, first down for the Hawks. Just a three-step drop, and he shuffles outside there. Nice move to get back inside and pick up the first down. It was only a seven-yard throw, so into this win, that's conservative, but it's certainly enough to pick up the first down. From the 32. High back set now. Rolling right. Major in trouble. Under pressure and down will go. They cannot afford to have this happen. Keith Raider, number 88, leading the charge. Along with... Look like number 73 was 83. Colby Johnson. Right here, he's got to get rid of the ball. He cannot afford to take these big losses right here. He needs to throw the ball out of bounds and then come up with second down. They have not been able to make these transitions from these long yardage plays. He's got to be a little smarter. Major keeping. Doesn't quite get back to the 30 after that loss of eight. He'll pick up a yard and it is third and considerable. Third and 12. Field position is so important when you talk to your quarterbacks about being smart. You don't want them to force the ball where it's going to be a turnover, but you want them to be smart enough to realize you can't take the big losses. Throw the ball out of bounds, throw it into the ground so that they're back to the line of scrimmage and end up at third and eight again, not third and 18. Give credit on that sack to Matt Barrows, the sophomore number 73 who came in. On third down, a little play fake. Hit as he throws his major and overshoots his man. Derek Smith, who was double covered. And again, major roughed up. 
He gets drilled from the back side. It's a little counter fake right here, and that, the back is supposed to block the back side, and he misses him, and here he comes right here. He gets it front side and back side. And that's Bennett, the ever-present Brant Bennett. Trotter now to kick into the wind. As we talked at the beginning of this drive, Mike, it'll be interesting to see where where Stillman Valley takes over the football. Now the deep men are playing on their own 45. And you can bet they're not going to let the ball hit the turf. Trotter gets a decent kick away, but it's knocked down by the wind. Takes a Stillman Valley bounce and ends up on the Cardinals 46 yard line. 25 yard punt, no return. And once again, field position in favor of Stillman Valley. 14 0, 850 to go. Mike Lawler and his team having a good opening series. Gave up one first down, but then put the clamps on. Ryan Busser behind center. And they give it to Bennett. And the big fullback gets a couple to about the 48. I thought it was interesting how Coach Catchell talked about the difference being the line play on both sides of the ball as far as Meridian is concerned, that they are not playing that well. I think certainly the Stillman Valley has something to do with that. Double wing set on second down and seven. Give it to A.J. Briarton. He's got a hole short of a first down, but Briarton gets about six yards. The wing back counter flow goes one way and the wing comes back the other way. Derek Smith, number 14, and Cody Bush, number 79. Flow goes here and here comes the wing back coming back the other way. Good trap by Big Pat Babcock. Give that to Chris Renfro right away. The ball came free, but after the play was dead. Third and one. Bennett straight ahead, first down. To the 40. Well, he has played himself some games. He really has, but a lot of credit needs to go to that offensive line right behind number 55, the center, Andy Phillips. They just wedge block it up front between behind Matt Wills, one guard, and Kyle Connell, the other guard. And of course, the focal point is Andy Phillips, the center. First down and a quick hit. This is Dwyerton, and he'll get five. Inside the 35. AJ Blair to the ball carrier. Tyler Jefferson, a 5'9 sophomore, making the play. Gain of five yards in the play. It's second down and five. Clock ticking. Coming up to the seven minute mark here in the third quarter. You're looking over the shoulder of Dennis Gatchel. It's been a long day for his Hawks so far. And Rimson. Gets first down yardage. Tom Renson stopped by Jason Trotter, but not before. He gets inside the 30-yard line. Watch the line surge right here. They're double-teaming at the point of attack with Big Pat Babcock, double-teaming with Matt Wills. And the surge in that offensive line is at least three or four yards on every snap. Winterland split left. And they keep the ball on the ground. Tanner Cole putting a stop on Briarton. Well, this clock is working just fine for Stillman Valley. Keeping the ball on the ground, keeps the clock moving, and churning up that first down yardage. They had 50 and 60 yard drives again without a pass. And this one goes to Remsen, and Remsen close to the 20. Very methodical job being done here by the Cardinals, Jack. It really is. And, it, you know, if you look at the average per gain of the backs, Bennett, over the course of the season, has averaged over seven yards a carry. The quarterback, Busser, has averaged over five yards a carry. Briarton has averaged almost eight yards a carry. So that gives an indication they've been consistent all year. This time the pitch to Briarton. Turns the corner, got a nice block, got him inside the 20-yard line and first down yardage before he was knocked out. 
by Shane Major with the help of Renfro. Good pursuit here by Meridian. It, he's getting the pitch. Notice how fast they had to get rid of it. But you notice how they're stretching it out right here so he can't get up the field. Now he's beating him to the corner for a couple yard game, but he's not able to turn up the field. The drive continues from the Meridian 15 first down. Bennett to the 10. Well, maybe short of that. Let's say the 11. Flags are down. Penalty markers. Again, the referee today, Gregory Lindgren. Here's the call. We have the legal motion on the offense. Repeat first down. Well, the flag is about the only thing that's been able to stop the Cardinals tonight. Mike Lawler was talking about that to Mitch Robinson at halftime, trying to cut down on those penalties. So first and 15 from the 20. And once again, they go to the big fullback. And Grant Bennett gets some more yardage before Trotter brings him down. Jason Trotter's been busy. Seven tackles for Jason Trotter today. Even though Stillman Valley really hasn't thrown the ball, Brian Buster has 43 completions on the season for over 1,000 yards and 14 touchdowns. Now, the way that Meridian's playing man coverage here, they're all within four yards of the ball, play action pass, somebody's going to be wide open. It's not a bad percentage. 30% of your passes go for touchdown. Well, shot it through to the tight end, Don Brown, and right through the hands. He was listening to you, Jack. I guess. The man was right open over the middle. He's one of the only people that ever listened to me. Then. <laughs> Good play action here after all the run fakes. Comes back with a little boot-like pass. Tight end's coming across. Just gets tripped up there. Nice job of coverage, though, by the linebackers. Another interesting note. A.J. Briarton has only caught eight passes this season. Four of them have been for touchdowns. Third and 12. Half Hits. back pass. And completes it. Once again to Brown. It was thrown by Nat Cox, one of the backup backs, and it goes to Brown right at the goal line, 16 yards. A little bit of trickery. You know, it was interesting how we talked about they've been running the ball, the ball the entire ball game, and then all of a sudden we talked about a little play action pass, and they go back to back with two passes, and it takes them down to the one yard line. Well, Cox has thrown four passes completed two of them before this one for a touchdown and here's a score on the ground Stillman Valley it's 20 to nothing Bennett becomes the third Stillman Valley player to score today and for Brant Bennett that's his 16th Touchdown on the ground. Trent Brown for the point after. It is up. And it is good. Four minutes, 22 seconds to go. Another long drive. This time they actually threw a couple of passes. And Stillman Valley has grown out to a 21-0 lead. Be back after this. Four minutes, 22 seconds left to go. Third quarter, the two-way championship game. Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney, Mitch Robinson. Our spotter, Brian Dyer. Our statistics maven, David Berkson. And our Fox Sports Net crew, Steve Warren, leading the truck. We hope you're enjoying a Thanksgiving holiday. And we know the Stillman Valley fans are enjoying this as Kenya kicks it with the win. And it goes out of bounds, so a break now at a time when Meridian really needs it. They're going to get good field position here starting from the 35. Well, this certainly has been a mirror of the first half as far as Stillman Valley is concerned with field, great field position and long drives. And short touchdowns. Short touchdowns like this, running behind the big center and a big tackle. Andy Phillips, the center, leading the way with Matt Wills and Kyle Connell, the two guards, wedging them out for the touchdown. Mm -hmm. 
this the best the best field position thus far for Meridian to start a drive. Well, the drive for Stillman Valley, 55 yards, 12 plays. They chew up that clock, 428. Shane Major and company for the Hawks, trailing now by three TDs. Here's the pitch. And Ryder, number 25, a sophomore running back, is in a tailback now. And Neil Ryder will pick up now maybe a yard. You can see right here the, the great flow and pursuit of the defensive front and linebackers by Stillman Valley. Officially no gain, so it's second down and ten. Major has it batted down, and once again, it is the sophomore Matt Barrows who made a fine place on a sack in the first half. Barrows comes in and uses his 6'2 and 260 to bat that ball down. Now, when you're going on a three-step drop, those linemen need to, to block low to keep their... You can see how that lineman dove down at his feet to get his hands down but he was athletic enough to still jump up, and it's only a three-step drop. That shows great reaction and agility by the defensive lineman. Major saying something to his teammates, trying to get him going. And look out. Right down. And neck tied. It'd be interesting to see whether Babcock plays defense or offense in college. As far as I can see, he can play both extremely well. Well, that was Brian Hunter as Dennis Gatcho is switching his backfield. Hunter is a 5'8 senior in there. And it's time for Trotter to kick it away. Uh, and again, problems. Kicking into that wind. This is about a six-yard punt. Well, make it ten. Coach's worst nightmare. Championship game, field position, AstroTurf. Strong wind. It's tough. Well, where do you go for all the latest and greatest information on your favorite Illinois high school team or athlete? Next time, log on. Check out www.ihsa.org. That fine site. Scott Johnson and the gang, we can't say enough good things. And right now, Stillman Valley. Working the clock with Briarton. And A.J. doesn't get much, if anything, but we got a flag. Uh, the Hawks cheerleaders get a player down also. Well, let's wait for Greg Lindgren, and we'll get this all sorted out. Player down is now... Justin Johnson, he's walking off under his own power. There's Justin. We have personal foul on the green, 15 yards, first down. Well, I didn't see that, Jack, did you? I don't know I... what brought that on. Maybe we can get a look on the replay. Uh, Jason Trotter trying to get an explanation. And this is just what Meridian doesn't need. I guess they uh, say he hit the quarterback after the play. Let's watch. That had to be out of cameras there. All right. Ball's on the 33-yard line now of Meridian. And straight ahead. Once again. Bennett. A few yards here, a few yards there. Keeps the clock moving. Whoever wins will take home its first school football championship. Briarton's got the quick hole on the pop. Gets inside the 25. He is very elusive. Derek Smith making the play. We really haven't seen A.J. Briarton pop one, but you can see he's got the potential to do that. Well, that particular play they're running is to to counter what the defense is doing. They're overflowing to the fullback side where Bryanton would be running. They're coming back with just a quick dive counter for him or trap, and he's made good yardage of it all evening. A 
again. The ball stays on the ground with Bennett stopped by Derek Smith. And we'll move the chains again. Young fan. Probably a Hawks fan. That's why he's not smiling so much right now. Well, we have a minute. I want to thank John Sudmeyer, who's done an outstanding job all year for the Stone Valley Pir uh, Cardinals. He's helping us up here in the booth. And this time, it is Remsen. Remsen, close to the 15-yard line. Making it very deep difficult for the defense to key on because they're really spreading the wealth around with the various backs from running Bennett inside and then Bryanton and Remsen on the outside. They're, they're doing an excellent job of play calling. Under a minute to go, third quarter. The only score, Stillman Valley. Bryanton, and he is hit quickly. And that'll bring up a third down. And probably the last play of the quarter, Tanner Cole making the stop. Remember, we've got the 3A game coming up this, uh, this evening at 7. As you look at Dennis Gatchel, we told you he's the athletic director, assistant principal, and full-time teacher, as well as the coach. Done a marvelous job. Took a team that really was nowhere two years ago. Won five games last year and undefeated this. And here... Remsen, did he get in? Just, yes, Ooh. touchdown. Well, the hands go up. 13 yards around the left side. Second touchdown of the evening for Tom Remsen. We got some excellent blocking on the option here. Nice job by the quarterback, but here's the key. The lead block right there. Pins that safety inside, and he powers his way into the end zone. Nice running by Tom Remsen, 5'11", 175-pound senior. And for Remsen, his second touchdown of the day. The kick trailing off, but it just gets inside that left upright. By Trent Brown, so he's been perfect on the day. His fourth extra point, and... With six seconds to go in the third quarter, it is a 28-0 Stillman Valley lead. I think what we talked about before, the wear and tear on those players that are going both ways, and, it, and it's more difficult when you have the linemen going both ways because there's no way that they can take a break, either on the offensive side or defensive side. They're just taking a pounding the entire game, and it's starting to wear on them and has been wearing on them. Kickoff coming from Stillman Valley. So they'll kick with the wind, and then Meridian will have the wind for the fourth quarter. You know what's interesting, Mike? We do the, the 1A, the 2A, and the 3A, and rarely do you see platoon football at those levels. And then tomorrow, when you see the larger schools, most of them platoon, and those kids, they, there are so many numbers that they have depth, and they're able to play a lot of people, a lot of reps. Renfro takes the kickoff and gets it up close to the 30-yard line. Well, following this, of course, Byron will be on the field 3A, and they will try to win a championship. It'll be an interesting time at both towns. We'll be back. Ready for the fourth quarter. Let's go down to Mitch Robinson. Guys, as you would expect, two completely different sidelines. On the Stillman side, Coach Lawler telling his kids just keep their mind to it, and they only have one more quarter till a championship. On this side, a defensive unit from Meridian that is demoralized. I mean, they've been pounded, and the offensive line from Stillman just keeps pounding and pounding. Heck, if you had to face Babcock all day, would you be happy by now? Back to you guys. Well, how about Grant Bennett? Another sack for him as he trapped Major close to his own 20-yard line. Bennett has just been fearsome on defense. Well, he's coming off the edge on the back side. You'll see quarterback sprinting away, and he'll be coming right into your screen. Right there's the shadow, and there he is, coming right off the edge from the back side. And he's enough of an athlete at 6'2", 215 pounds to make those plays. Loss of five, second down and 15. give on the inside 
Trotter will pick up a couple, but that's not going to get it done right now. Tackle by Keith Lee. Looking at the statistics from the third quarter, really hasn't changed much. Look at the first downs and the rushing yards. My, my. Well, the time of possession is really interesting there when you look at those stats. It almost looks as if somebody pushed the wrong button on. What did they yardage. do for 14 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Third and ten. Meridian needs to get something going here. Major with some time. Flag. Intended from the quarter and complete, but late flag. Flag is thrown. Rusty Beamer was on the coverage and probably over his back, and that should be going against the Cardinals. It's just a slant coming in from the right side of your screen. Right here, a little roll slant. And right there, the ball actually was thrown behind him, and that's really what started the contact. The defensive back, the receiver stopped, and the defensive back ran right into him. So the pass resulted in the, uh, the penalty. Beamer, the sophomore, guilty of the pass interference, so that brings up a first down at the 44-yard line. Rusty Beamer has been such a pleasant surprise, one of two sophomores playing in that secondary. Winter was the other one. Both were brought up from the sophomore team around the time of the playoffs. Major again being chased, oh. and a fine catch made by Wendell with the defensive man draped all over him, and that again, I believe, was Beamer. Well, that was a great throw, and the reason it was a great throw because he's moving to his left under heavy pressure. Look at the way he snap throws that ball. That's just a great hands catch right there by Wendell. Between Beamer and Kenyon, great catch. That's good for another first down. Trailing by four touchdowns. Check it. Just about a yard short from Cardinals territory. And again, quick work by the defensive line of Stillman Valley. And then the secondary came in, helping out Babcock just to pancake. Well, the nose guard, little Kenny Sulser, number, number uh, eight, was so quick on the quarterback, he was there as he got the snap. There's a good shot of Kenny Sulser, 5'8", 150, a senior. And when you get a kid that, that is that quick and he plays over the center, it's very difficult for the center and the two guards. They've got to spend a lot of time trying to see where he's at and which gap he's trying to penetrate. Clock running at nine minutes and five seconds, third and one. Just over midfield and major. Takes it himself and he will get the first down. Now he just went the opposite way of Kenny Salser. Salser slid to the left. Quarterback sneak to the right. Yeah, I would think that would be an effective play. If you've got that nose man jumping around, if you're a quarterback, it can get a couple of yards no matter what. Well, you know, it is if you've got short yardage, but uh, the problem is they've needed more than just one or two yards on some of these drives, and, that, and Salser has created problems for that offensive front. Story on Beamer, he came in to replace his older brother in the secondary late in the season. His older brother Toby got ill. So he's doing a good job filling in. First down, Major with a little bit of time, but a man in his face all the way downfield. Both sides want flags, but none is thrown. Again, a lot of pressure on Major. A little mix up in the backfield. You can see right here, he bangs into the wing. And uh, he's sliding outside, but you can see the pressure. He's just getting rid of the ball before he gets sacked. Well, Smith went down there, but I don't think he would have caught that anyway. Jeff. I don't either. And incidental contact wouldn't have drawn that flag anyway. Major's numbers. It's about a season average. It's about a 43% passer. Second down, cross to Smith. And Derek Smith gets thrown down. Colby Johnson, third down. 
That was just a wide receiver screen to the two receiver side. They throw it out to him. He just takes one step up, one step back, and the other receiver blocks for him. So it's just a wide out screen, but great pursuit by Stillman Valley secondary. Made the semifinals the last two years. This year they're in the final and just under eight minutes from a championship. Major with Babcock in pursuit and guess who gets him? Grant Bennett, his third sack of the day. A loss of eight. There is Bennett. Major is very upset right there, but there's not a whole heck of a lot that he can do about it. You can see right here that Babcock comes with great quickness untouched and creates the sack for the other two defenders here. Barrow's in there as well. He's got two sacks. Give him a half. He's got a sack and a half. I'm sure Major is upset with his lineman for not blo blocking Babcock, but I'm sure they'll turn to him and say, well, you block him and see how well you can do. On fourth. And a bunch, fourth and 17. Major fires it up, looking for Smith, overshoots him, Kenyon on the coverage. And once again, the Cardinals thwart the Hawks. One bird over another. That's a frustrated quarterback right there. 6.56 to go, Stillman Valley will have the ball when we come back. They also have a four touchdown lead. Twenty-eight nothing, Stillman Valley over Meridian, the Class 2A championship. Still with six minutes fifty seconds to go, fourth quarter, and Stillman Valley on its way to its first title. Brian Busser, the quarterback, and we're just should be just about set to go. Now we are, and a quick hitter. What an opening, Remsen again who's had some good opportunities as well as a couple of touchdowns. He was a shoestring away here, an inside trap right off the, right off the tackle. You can see right here, that tackle's not made and he's gone. Renfro gets him. But a pickup of 14 yards and a first down. Briarton and A.J. Briarton gets a few more, keeps the clock moving. You know, as we're watching this game, as a fan, I always like to watch the line play and just watch the surges. And you can get a feel for who is obviously controlling the line of scrimmage by how far from where the ball is now. Just watch that offensive line and see how far across that line they penetrate and drive back the Meridian defensive line. It'll give you kind of an idea of what's been going on the entire game. Second and five from the 29. Remsen again, and this time he may get a yard or so. Stillman Valley has tied a record for Class 2A with four rushing touchdowns in the championship game. They are on their way to setting a record that is most unusual, fewest passes in a championship game. Right now they've got two, and they've completed one, and don't really seem to have to throw any more. I'd rather have that first record. Yeah, thank you. The other one. Third and three. They give it to Bennett. And Bennett driven back by Smith and Renfro close to a first down very close as the clock goes under five minutes I think he's got it are you Henry Higgins by Joe he does it is a first down Bells on the 24 of course tomorrow another full day of championship state final action We'll bring you the 4A title match, Joliet Catholic and Metamora, and the 5A. We'll have 6A for you, Schomburg and Naperville Central, and that'll be on Fox Sports Plus Plus. AJ Briarton gets plus about five there, and, and we got whistles all over the place. Preliminary 
call. Looks like a motion penalty, but we will wait. As Gregory Lindgren picks up the flag and straightens himself out. Legal motion on the offense. We put first, repeat first down. Well, other than penalties, Jack, you can't say too much wrong with what Stillman Valley has done tonight. No, they came in sticking to their game plan of wanting to run the football, and they have certainly done that. We've got three outstanding backs and a, and a very good offensive line. And we're going to get an encroachment call here, it looks like. We'll get it right back. As Cody Bush jumps the gun. Bush has played well. 5'11 senior from Meridian. You know, it's really a shame that Meridian, you know, they come into this ball game 13 and 0, and they probably have one of their poorer performances from that standpoint as far as with this score. And it certainly is not an indication of what a great season they had. Just had an off day, and, and Stillman Valley is probably having one of their best games of all of the entire year. Well, we discussed this with Dennis Gatcha. We'll tell you what he said to us after this play. And here's a bootleg, a counter buster to the 20. And for a second there, it looked like he might have broken that one. 23, Ryan Murray and Chris Renfro make the stop. Anyway, remember, this is a team that won five games last year, which was the total that equaled the previous three years of the school combined. So they've had an outstanding season. Mass substitutions come in now. We'll try to set them for you. And that is Toby Beamer, older brother of the sophomore Rusty Beamer, who's taking the handoff now. Toby Beamer, as we said, played earlier. And his brother ended up taking his spot on defense. Quarterback is Trent Brown. And we've got a third and eight. Flags fly as the play goes inside. And let's go down to Mitch Robinson while they sort this one out. Mitch. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, after the final whistle, be sure to stay with us for postgame. We'll have the winning coach, looks like Mike Lawler, and a couple of his players, plus the awards. That's all right here after the final whistle of this 2-8 state championship. Mike. All right, Mitch, another fine job, and I hope you stay insulated. Now, is he going to drink that, or is he going to oh, no. throw that over the That's, coach? You know, know, he is a big kid, and he's probably dehydrated. I think somebody just told Mr. Babcock uh, there are a couple of things you can do, and that's not one of them. And I think the person who told him that, that man right there. I think and he's got a smirk. He's just hoping that he doesn't say so what. Hey, I'm now, a senior. Really, now, don't forget, now, Lawler's an old defensive line. Old, you know, he's probably at least 30. So about the 13-yard line. Let's see who made that carry. David Hartsky, number 42. Hartsky, a six-foot junior. Yes, so we're two and a half minutes to go. So that was a first down from the 13. And again, we get whistles. All right, we got a timeout call. On the green. On the first. I think that they're getting organized to get their subs in. You know, Dennis Gatcha said we expected to have a good season. We didn't expect to have a great season. And, you know, not to say they were just thrilled to be here, but they were surprised that they got this far. They knew they had decent talent this year. Well, if I'm a coach, I'd like to be surprised with a great season rather than a good season. They certainly uh, yeah. have had a great season. There is no doubt about it. Unfortunately, uh, in their last game of the year, they have to have kind of a down performance. Well, they're, they're in a tough conference, too, that Oka Valley. Seems like Malik were in there, and of course they've been here. Here, meaning for the state finals. You look at the score, and you, and you, you don't realize how well coached both of these teams are. All you got to do is watch formations and the different things that they do. They're 
both extremely well coached football teams. Yeah. The score is not an indication that somebody isn't, believe me. As Brown is wrapped up by Wilson, and they're just letting the clock run down as it approaches two minutes. Stillman Valley, that far from its first state title. And straight up the middle. Hartsky again on the carry, David Hartsky. That Naperville Central Schaumburg matchup is going to be outstanding, have a feeling. Yes, I think that's a good feeling that you have. And uh, Julia Catholic Metamora. Another good one. Should be pretty good too. Look at that rushing yardage. And Dina inside the 10. Clock at a minute 19 and counting. Being the sentimental traditionalist that I am, I almost kind of hope that Stillman Valley fumbles and Meridian picks it up and runs 90 yards for a score. <laughs> I always knew that about you. Another quarterback coming in now for the Cardinals, Zach Davidson, a sophomore, getting a little game experience. Under a minute to go. Another short handoff. To Adam Hurt, a sophomore. And a whistle. Mike Lawler just trying to play as many players as he can. First up. I think he's trying to stay away from that water bucket, too. I, I just don't think I'd do anything to him that he didn't want done. You know, just from the looks of him. No, no, but Babcock is 6'4", 300. I don't care. I was talking to him before the game. He had a game face on. Let me tell you. But he's mellow now. Yeah, well, did you see the smile? You know, he's up for a touchdown. <laughs> Here's a young man who's played very hard. Took his team to the final. Shane Major talking to his coach. Teenagers are very resilient. Another day or two, they'll have bounced back and, and they'll realize the thrill of being down here. Of course, they would love to have won it, but there's only two teams that get to this game coming out of the 2A. And what a setting, Jack. I, you know, to sit in this stadium and look around. Uh, this stadium was really a prototype for designing sight lines for the new fields. A giant stadium. And you, every seat here is a good seat. Mm -hmm. 70,000 of them. Most of them are between the goal lines. Not a lot because they have the ball on the south side. But Wouldn't it be great if Soldier Field was like this? Now we're getting into trouble here. I, you know, <laughs> I, I tread softly there. Well, we're told that uh, Mike Lawler did smile last week when somebody dumped a bucket of water on him, so maybe that will happen later. As Meridian has the ball, and Rocky Markham is the quarterback, number 12, a sophomore. And there's Shane Major, the senior. A lot of happy Cardinals there. You know, if you talk to most coaches, they'll talk about skilled players, but nine out of ten will tell you they'd rather have good, solid people up front in the trenches because that'll make the difference in a ball game. Not one great player or two skilled kids. It's if you're solid up front in the trenches, and that's been the, that's been the key to this game. Well, this game is over. And Stillman Valley with... A record time four rushing touchdowns and a record time total of two forward passes. They don't care about the records. They just know they're the champs. Stillman Valley 28, Meridian nothing. That's the final here from Memorial Stadium in Champaign-Urbana. They're a bunch of chirping Cardinals and their fans. Good sportsmanship there. You always like to see it. Still don't see enough of it. 
Meridian, again, a perfect season until today, but a great season nonetheless. And Stillman Valley, well, they did lose a couple. They lost to neighboring town Byron, who's going to play the third place game against St. Joe's Ogden. And if Byron wins that one, they're going to have to close off Route 72 for about a week. <laughs> Both those towns, you know, right along uh, Route 72 up there near the Rockford area. You know, this is one of those games where the scoreboard, maybe the kids from Meridian will only be disappointed for a day or two. If this game was 28-27 or 29-28, you'd be remembering it. Woulda, coulda, shoulda all those times. So I don't know. You know, it's great to, to play in this game. You'd love to win it. But you have a lot of sleepless nights when it's a, a game by... You know, an extra point here, a field goal there. Yeah, well, the thing is, though, for most of these young people, this, this is the pinnacle of their sports careers. And to say that they played in the state championship game, win or lose, they're going to remember that as something very few people can boast. Let's check in with Mitch Robinson and see who he's got with him. Thanks a lot, Mike. First, we're here with uh, Pat Babcock and Tim Remsen. And uh, first, Pat, uh, Obviously, the running game worked today. Incredible outing for you guys. Yeah, it was uh, real great, especially by our running backs. They all ran hard today. But that's what made it possible is our running backs ran real hard today, and uh, we opened up some holes for them, and we, we ran off tackle all day on them. State champion in the high, in wrestling, state champion in football. Which is sweeter? Uh, I think football, because you do it with others. And it's just everybody believes in you and shows trust in you, and you actually have to go out there and perform not just for yourself, but for everybody you represent. So how do you like this field? Could you see it being your home for another four years? Uh, possibly, yeah. Congratulations. Nice job. Tim, come on in here. Two touchdowns tonight. You guys tie the state record for four rushing touchdowns in the state final. How did you do it? Oh, well, having uh, Mr. Babcock and the rest of our linemen blocking for us, it's not that tough to do it, but, you know, I mean, just hard work in the off season and just a lot of heart from everyone on this team and anything's possible. You know, Byron plays in the next game. It would have been nice, though, if you got another shot at him, huh? Yeah, well, maybe after this we could go home and play one. But, yeah, it would be nice. But I hope they do good and come out with victory just like us. All right, congratulations. Nice job tonight, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, Mike, and uh, here we have the coach, Mike Lawler, Stillman Valley. Uh, coach, you didn't even smile for, like, the last two minutes of the game. The offense, though, Babcock and them just pounding the ball. Yeah, we really were able to wear them down. They had, they had a, quite a few guys going both ways, and we, and we hope to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's always tense there, and I probably should smile a little bit more than what I did. Uh, these kids did a great job. You know, a lot of coaches can go their whole career without getting a state title. Your second year at Stillman Valley, you have it. How sweet is this? Uh, it's, it's just a great feeling. You know, these kids, we've asked so much of them in the last uh, three, four years that they've been a part of the program, and to finally finish it off. It's just a great feeling. going to be a wild time back in Stillman Valley tonight? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of people are staying here for Byron, but uh, I, th I think it's going to be a long night here. Congratulations. What a great job. Thank you. Nice job. All right, Mike, back to you. Thank you, Mitch. Good job yourself. And we'll be uh, coming back here. We'll have a trophy presentation. We'll see a lot of smiling Cardinals. And we'll also see some Hawks who have reason to keep their heads high. Just like that. Well, the stage is set. Trophies are being awarded. Stillman Valley, the first title in its school's history. Last two years, they got to the semifinals. This year, all the way, and they pitched a shutout. It was a heck of an effort on their part. They really controlled the, the ball game from start to finish, and uh, without being too redundant, which I usually am, they did it up front in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Well, you talk about Pat Babcock being a uh, uh, really an anchor for this line. I mean, he is just an incredible athlete, as well as being a large person, as you see there. A uh, couple of interesting items that we glossed over before, but we can tell you four rushing touchdowns is a record, which uh, is interesting. I think the other thing that makes it even more uh, unusual is that, well, there goes the trophy. We'll show you that first. They only threw two passes the whole game. Now, even with the smaller schools, a lot of times you see they won't have much of a passing attack. But they can't throw the ball. They just didn't have to. Well, they didn't have to. Their, their form of throwing the ball was on the option when they pitched it. They really did not need to throw it. They were so dominant up front that they just nickel-dimed 
Meridian and they were averaging over four yards of carry and of course that means that if you average over four that means it's third and two and I like those odds. Well Mike Lawler has been at Stillman Valley for six years went to Platteville. We told you went to Marion Central and played on the 89 2 way championship team there as an offensive and defensive lineman a two way player. Did we do that game. I think we might have. <laughs> Let's go down to Mitch with one of the stars of today's game. Yeah, there's uh, one for us little guys. Kenny Solcher, you look at the defensive line, he's surrounded by 300-pound monsters. Kenny, give me your numbers. How tall are you? 5'6", uh, about 130. With the heart of a giant in there. Talk about this one. This, uh, You guys were pretty dominating. Yeah, our defense was dominating all year, except for the Byron game. They ran around us pretty bad, but we just came out, played our defense the way we were supposed to, and that, you see the end result right there. I asked one of the other guys, I know you'd love another shot at Byron if you could. Oh yeah, we'd love another shot, no doubt about that. I, we just leave the lights on here after Byron's game and go at them. Hopefully two state champions being that you guys are towns that border on each other. Yeah. Great, uh, nice job tonight, Kenny. Way to get in there for these little guys. I like to see that. <laughs> Mike, back to you. Okay, Mitch, you know, he was listed in the program, Kenny, was his number 80. I understand why he's number eight. There's no room to put that zero. <laughs> He really was effective at, at the nose because he kept sliding back and forth and he created problems for the front of the offensive line for Meridian because they didn't know where he was. and He was so quick that they couldn't block him and he created a lot of problems in the backfield. Well, he also had some interesting offensive sets. They go with the wishbone, they'll go with the double wing, they'll break the wishbone. We were trying to analyze that before the game and I think you called it a broken bone. <laughs> well, actually it was. It was like a wing bone. But what they didn't have to do was throw the ball. So all those run formations didn't right, really force any defensive movement by Meridian because everything was inside of tackles. But they changed it up. They ran counters and they ran traps and they ran power and they did a nice job with the change up. Well, you see, they take the trophy to the fans over there on the Cardinal side of the field. And Mitch Robinson, I believe, has uh, somebody else with him. Let's go back down to Mitch. Thanks, Mike, here with Joe Bloom, assistant coach, longtime head coach in the Rockford area and a co head coach of Stillman Valley a couple years ago. Mike Lawler, one of your uh, protégés. Uh, how proud are you of the job he did? Oh, he's done a great job. Uh, you know, and I knew he would. He's just a great young football coach, and uh, he, he'll probably win uh, a couple more before he's through. He's good. Can you talk to us about how good a lineman Pat Babcock really is? Well, he, this is the first uh, first game anybody's tried to play him, uh, you know, in the last probably almost all season people just dive at his knees and, and he you know if you play him he'll take you off the line and probably to your back is this one one of the greatest Stillman Valley teams you've seen in your years though uh, yeah it's this is a good team you know it, this we were pretty dominant in the state championship game uh, you know I think that says it all great congratulations nice seeing you again take care all right Mike back to you Joe Bloom the venerable retired coach now still works on the staff with uh, Mike Lawler as Mike's assistant Suppose turnaround is fair play. And as we look to uh, as we look to the future, you've got the 3A coming up. That Byron St. Joe's Ogden match would be very interesting in the fact that so much is being made of the rivalry between you know Stillman Valley and Byron and how they're both come together maybe with twin state championships. We'll have to play that one out. We'll see that one, of course, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. That should be a good one. And of course, Stillman Valley can talk about Byron now because they're done with their work. They've already won, won the state championship. Right. Both Stillman Valley losses came to 3 8 teams, and both were by a field goal in the final minutes. We'll take a break here. There goes that trophy. We'll be back, show you some pictures, and wrap things up here at Memorial Stadium. Stillman Valley now with the first touchdown on the quarterback option. Just an option. The, the defensive secondary overran the pitch man. He cuts back, and then he goes for the first touchdown. That was the start of the avalanche. Field goal should have ended a rally, but didn't. Right there, roughing the kicker. Automatic first down. Doesn't take long. First drive, power, right off tackle, and they go for the touchdown. Made it 14-0 then. Well, third Meridian and try to get on the board. Third and 35, and here's a 37-yard pass. And that was the same major to Dirk, to Dirk uh, Smith, Derek Smith. But then Mr. Bennett plays the other side of the ball. Comes off the edge, had a couple sacks today, played great on offense and defense. 14-0 after the first half. Second half more of the same. This is Bennett, a short touchdown. And here, second touchdown for Tom Remsen. Nice block downfield, the option, and he's in for the touchdown. 
And just like that, because there was a lot of action in between, look at the statistics, 260 yards on the ground. Oh, yeah, 16 through the air. And you can see statistics, in this case, don't lie. Boy, they certainly don't. And that's a uh, coach's nightmare on that right side of that screen there for Meridian. They had a great season, but those stats are nothing, something that they never would have dreamed could have been possible. All right, our Pepsi plays of the games, the two touchdown runs from Tom Remsen, and the senior got one in each half. This was the first one. Great blocking at the point of attack, and just power right here. The will to get in, great leg drive, and he's in for the touchdown. And the second one, everybody's talking about Briarton and, uh, and, and his work, and Babcock, and Remsen had the two scores today. He did, but he had good blocking downfield, as you can see here by the lead back, and then also by the, by the receivers cutting off the secondary, and there's his second touchdown. First for four, the second for 13, and uh, that was the story. So here we are, back, and we're coming up to the 3A game. I think tomorrow's going to be a great day, too. We're going to have uh, that Naperville Central game. we got to tell folks, the 6A game is on Fox Sports Plus Plus, okay? There's a Hawks game tomorrow. There's a Bulls game tomorrow. So there's a special number to check uh, with your cable company to find out where you can get that game, but you can get it live. You can also get it taped after the uh, Bulls and Hawks game. Joliet Catholic in the, in the 4A and Naperville Central and Schaumburg in the 6A. I'm going to have a tough time sleeping tonight looking forward to those games. Okay, well, we had a good one today. We also had a good one, a, a last-minute victory for the Blue Boys of Carthage. That was in the 1A game, and we've got much more to come tonight and tomorrow. We'll be back to sign off after this. at Zupke Field at Memorial Stadium here at the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. It's a different site for the state finals this year, Jack. And, you know, we talked about the traditions on this field, and certainly both teams acquitted themselves well today in the in the shadows of Red Grange and Bob Zupke and Jim Grabowski, and uh, we can name a few more names. There are some tremendous traditions here, and, and these kids playing on this field are going to remember this for the rest of their lives. And what's interesting is it's almost it could be a one-time shot. The reason we're here is because Illinois State is in the playoffs, and so their field was not available. As, and as most of you fans know, all of the games over the last 15 years have been at Illinois State University in Bloomington. Well, they had to make a change because Illinois State's football team has been doing so well that yeah. they were host, hosting tomorrow Colgate in the playoffs, so the field was not available, so they made the shift over to Champaign. But what is very important that people don't understand is AstroTurf is a key at this time of the year to have a field like that available to play on. And it has been beautiful for everyone so far. Again, that Class 6A game tomorrow to catch it live on Fox Sports Net Plus. And we'll show you a number to call for the channel information on your particular cable system. That 877-655-PLUS will uh, get you to uh, where you can find that on your dial. So that's the story right now. The two-way game again. Stillman Valley, 28-0 over Meridian. Stillman Valley's Cardinals are the champs of 1999. There, a look at the Meridian Hawks, who put themselves uh, very well and acquitted themselves well. So, for Jack McInerney and Mitch Robinson, I'm Mike Lederman, saying so long till next time. We'll see you soon. Come back at 7.30 for the 3A championship game. So long, everybody.